Timirandasya, Kena Jana Salakaya, Chaksun Militam Yena Tasmai Shiguruvena Maha, Namam Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pustaya Bhutaleshi Makti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamine. Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pacharine Nirsesis. Manchikalpa Tarubhischa, Kripa Sindhu Pevacha, Patita Nam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnava Bhyo Namaha Namaha. Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda. Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sivasari Gaur Bhaktarinda. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. <laughs> Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari. Can you put up a verse on the board there? Uh, yes, Guru Maharaj. I will, uh, I will ask Lavanya because you find my screen very blurry. 4728. Yes, Guru Maharaj. 4728. Yes. Uh, Guru Maharaj, if I may humbly request you to just tilt your um, laptop screen just a little bit. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Perfect. Thank you. So this is a verse from the fourth canto, The Sacrifice Performed by Daksha. I thought we'd explore this topic because it's a topic that we always hit on, but I was thinking we explore it directly this time, and that is the nature of material existence. So the verse is Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya, Sadashya. Uchu Udpati Arvyanya Sarana Urukaisa Durama Upati Aryavana Sarana Urukaisa Durganta Gogra Valam Vistam Visaya Migatrishyatma Gehuro Bharaha Twandro Sobrave Kalamrigya Bayam Sokadava Gya Sarta Padukas tepa saranada kadayati kamo pasritaha. Translation The members of the assembly address the Lord, O exclusive shelter for all who are situated in trouble life. In this formidable fort of conditioned existence, the time element like a snake is always looking for an opportunity to strike. The world is full of ditches of so-called distress and happiness. And there are many ferocious animals always ready to attack. The fire of lamentation is always blazing and the mirage of false happiness is always alluring. But one has no shelter from them. Thus foolish persons live in the cycle of birth and death, always overburdened and discharging their so-called duties. And we do, know, do not know when they would accept the shelter of your lotus feet. Purport, real short. Persons who are not in Krishna conscious are living a very precarious life as described in this verse. But all these circumstantial conditions are due to forgetfulness of Krishna. Krishna conscious movement is meant to give relief to all these bewildered and distressed persons. Therefore, it is the greatest relief work for all humanity. 
and the workers thereof are the greatest well-wishers, for they follow in the footsteps of Lord Chaitanya, who is the greatest friend to all living entities. Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita Gadadhar, Sri Vasari Gaur, Bhaktivindam, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. So this verse explains a lot. Um, this material world is a place where one is um, restricted, shackled, and at the same time defeated. This place is meant for misery. Just like a prison house is a place of punishment for the deviant citizen. So the material world is a place of punishment for those who fell from the spiritual world. And so this world, this world is like a jailhouse and therefore as an in a jailhouse as opposed to a free citizen, there are so many restrictions. One wants to be happy and one cannot be happy. One wants to be free, but one was just restricted. One wants to live on and on, but one has to die. One has to live in a good way, but one has to get sick and get diseased. One has to fulfill our desires, but many times they, they don't and become frustrated. One has to try to interact with other living entities who are of the same nature. And many times that interact in action re ends in difficulty or distress. This is the material world. <laughs> uh, it's not possible to make a nice place here. <laughs> As Prabhupada said, if you think you can make the bathroom a deity room, then you're mistaken because the bathroom is the bathroom and the deity room is the deity room, they're quite opposite. So in other words, one is trying to be happy in a place where there is no happiness. That's called material life. Or life centered around bodily activities. And therefore one struggles. So material life is simply the opportunity to struggle in different ways throughout one's life. In youth, one struggles to learn, one struggles to fit in, one struggles to uh, get ahead. And when one gets a little older, one struggles for relationships. And then when one gets a little older, one struggles to keep the relationships or to rebuild lost relationships. Or one struggles to work hard in order to get some payment so they can somehow maintain their body in this world. It was just, this world is just what it is. It's a prison house. A prison house means not a place of happiness. Um, this world is sometimes compared to a dream and when we go and sleep at night, we sometimes enter into a dream state. And in that dream state, we're seeing and experiencing things that we normally see during our waking life. But because it's in a dream, there's no substance there. So when we wake up, we realize, oh, it was just a dream, just an image, the mind's reflections. So in the same way, this material world can never be anything what it, but what it is. The place where the living entity cannot fulfill its desires. Although it tries in so many different ways. So what does one do? Well, the average person has this conception which perpetuates itself 
that by adjusting the material energy, rearranging the way I think, the way I live, the way I interact with others, I can improve or I can actually find satisfaction in that. But that is also incorrect because material life is relegated to a mood of, of trying to get something. And in many cases, it's a mood of exploiting living entities in order to get something. Thinking that what I will get will make me happy. So this struggle goes on. Mitche Maya Davase, Kachu Habubuduai, Chief Krishna Das, A Vishwash, Kalina Adukanai. And this uh, little part of a bhajan by Bhakti Vinota Koran illustrates that the waves of material energy, and these three modes are considered to be, or compared to be, waves, they push a living entity in certain directions, either in the direction of good activities, selfish activities, or destructive activities. These are the three modes. Everything is done in ignorance is destructive. Everything is done is passion is selfish. Everything done is goodness is, uh, is beneficial or somewhat beneficial by material standards. So we and the living entity wonders why they have they gotten into this material world. They never question how to get out. They never think in that way. They think, well, I have to adjust things. So the constant uh, mood of trying to rearrange the material energy in such a way that one can find some happiness and satisfaction in it goes on in, as a way of life. And people continue this mood life after life after life. But uh, here it mentions that there is a way out and that is the process of bhakti as given by Lord Chaitanya. It's the greatest relief work for the human society. Relief from what? The miseries of living in the material world, which are four main ones, but then you take it even within the four main ones, there's so many more subcategories of miseries. The four and way ones is birth, death, disease, and old age. Taking birth is an unnatural thing, but sometimes when someone gives a birth to a child, we rejoice, we have cake, we give congratulations to the parents, and the parents are so happy to receive so much benedictions upon them. But then again, after some time, things change. So birth is not a uh, very happy thing. One has in the fourth canto, the same fourth canto it describes adverse fruit of activities is one of the later chapters in the fourth canto, which describes how the living entity lives in the womb for nine months. And being crunched up on this little sack with one's arms and legs pushed into the body. And the only connection with life is from the mother who whatever foodstuff she eats, it's uh, assimilated into the into the navel and it's connected to the navel of the child to the navel of the mother. And that's how the child eats. And that goes on for nine months. If somebody put you in that condition for nine minutes, you would go crazy, not to speak of nine months. <laughs> so being pushed into a womb for nine months and if the mother is not careful, 
the child can also uh, undergo much suffering while in there. If the mother eats something pungent or too strong for the child, then the child will also suffer. And it can't express its suffering, but it suffers. So that's why these four miseries, birth, death, disease, and old age, birth is considered one of the miseries. Why? Because the living entity as its pure spirit and soul is not meant to take birth or meant to acquire a material body. But when it happens, it's not very pleasant. And uh, Prabhupada goes on to describe in the fourth, sec fourth canto, the section, wherein the living entity, after seven months in the womb, and this is for those who are pious, this doesn't happen to all children, but just to certain select pious children, uh, the Lord removes the covering of Maya and the living entity can understand who God is and what their relationship is. And then the living entity in the womb prays that when I get out, I'll become your devotee, my dear Lord. But then after it comes out, it forgets. It's surrounded by all kinds of things that are completely new to its experience. It becomes enamored by material life and forgets the prayers of the womb. And many times it has to undergo suffering even in an early age. So this is what goes, this is what comes out of the spirit of the life. So this uh, material world is simply meant to give us trouble. And the happiness that we are looking for which is innate to the soul's existence is not found on the external level, but internally. Happiness is not external, it's internal. It may express itself outwardly, externally, but it comes from the internal mood of the person. There's a story, it's a little story, it's a kind of an antidote where one man, he, he, uh, he hears somewhere in the world, there's a great treasure. So he decides to find that treasure. So he gets maps and he does, gets all, whatever he needs. And uh, his whole life, he's going from place to place looking for the treasure. He never finds it. Finally, old age sets in. He becomes so old, he leaves the body. His friends and relatives are notified. They came and take his body and bring it back to his home. And then they take a, dig a, a, a grave site in the backyard. And while they're digging, they come across this great treasure in the ground. So that's the story. We're looking for happiness somewhere else, but it's found right within your own heart. And that happiness is our relationship with the Supreme Lord. So to reawaken that happiness, to find that happiness, is a process of stopping to look for it in the wrong place and look for it in the right place. So here, persons who are not in Krishna consciousness, they live a very precarious life. But devotees, they know Happiness is found in relationship to the supreme source of happiness, Krishna. <laughs> and so they engage in activities of devotional service and experience happiness. And sometimes that experience come, uh, excels way beyond their expectations. Because the happiness in Krishna consciousness is the happiness of the natures, of the soul's nature which is unlimited. So if the soul is, un is unlimitedly happy, if the soul is unlimitedly happy, then uh, how does it find itself in this world? It can't, it can't measure anything. So then it looks, 
Finally, when it wakes up to trying all material arrangements, plans, ideas for happiness, somehow starts to look towards spiritual life. And if one is fortunate, they come across a bona fide spiritual master who is a representative of Krishna and teaches them the process of how to awaken that happiness which exists within. And that is bhakti yoga. So unless, as Prabhupada makes the point here, people are suffering because they're not Krishna conscious. They're not suffering because they have a particular type of body. They're not suffering because they have a particular material situation. They're not suffering because they have a particular type of uh, lifestyle. They suffer because they have a material body and they're living in the material world. That, 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 re, that applies to everyone. So Krishna consciousness is the way out of material consciousness into real consciousness or eternal consciousness. That consciousness which actually brings the living entity in contact with the source of all happiness, the Lord himself. So when we give sufficient amount of time to devotional service, and that's important because as we give time, we also get more and more of a taste for that service. And then gradually, whatever material happiness may still be on the horizon of our life, we can pass it up. We can leave it behind because it's insignificant. It has no relationship. It has no relationship other than with this temporary fleeting material body. And so to become Krishna consciousness is natural. The living in the material world is unnatural. Although the it appears to be the opposite, that this material world seems to be so much part of us that we, we can fit in any place. But we can't because we, this material body is subject to deterioration. And even while we have it, there is so many inebriates and difficulties. So the message is that uh, this material world is what it's designed to give us trouble. It's designed to frustrate our attempts to become happy, to fulfill our desires. It's designed by Krishna himself. Sometimes people say, well, why is there so much suffering in the material world? So the, the understanding is given. And that is we have to see what is, as Krishna says, to know the difference between what is eternal and what is temporary. What is the soul? What is the body? And go for the activities that centered around soul-like existence. Okay. So these are some little uh, messages on material life. Maya simply means what is not. It doesn't mean Maya doesn't mean what doesn't exist. It means what is not what it presents itself to be. Just like sometimes you read the outside of a package about what's inside. And then you open it and try it, and it's not anywhere near like it was described. So that's the material energy. The external facade is simply what it is, a facade. And one has to overcome that facade by coming to the reality. And that reality 
is our spiritual life. So we can, we can start to grow into that reality in this material world. And we can change the material world into a spiritual world by mixing nicely with all. Okay, so these are some points you can think about. This verse is interesting. It also talks about the time factor, which is compared to a snake. Time is always ready to strike. Time means death. Death can come at any moment. And it's not like anyone has guaranteed. Sometimes we say Maharaj Prikshit had seven days that he was guaranteed to live. And Prabhupada would also say, you don't even have, you can't even guarantee seven minutes. And that's just the way this world is. And so um, anyone who thinks they can be happy here is really, they, they're called uh, uh, madda. Madda means mad. It's a form of insanity. Happiness exists not in this material world. Uh, thank you very much, Guru Maharaj, for explaining to us at length about the futility of trying to be happy over here and uh, the importance of coming to our real life, which is our spiritual life, our uh, relationship with Krishna. Thank you very much for that. Dear devotees, please go ahead, unmute yourselves, and if you like, you can put your camera on and ask questions or share your realizations. Thank you. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to you, Maharaj. Welcome back. Thank you, Maharaj. Maharaj, this is a very, very timely verse for me. Uh, <laughs> because for the last two weeks, uh, there has been a lot of anxieties in my life because of family situation in India because of COVID. And um, at one point, I was even uh, prepared. I booked my flights as well to go to India as well for my mom and dad. And I have been through this this, this experience with, where we constantly keep on contemplating the we are not the body, we are the soul. However, when we are put, or at least when I was put in a very challenging situation like this, practical situations, practically, theoretically, you know the, the philosophy Practically, it was very difficult for me to implement for the for the for for at least a week and a half. And then the remedy was to speak to devotees uh, as much as possible. And then I kind of came back. But you know, so so this verse is, is so timely. The time factor, the the realization of we are not the body. Temporary nature of everything. And the miserable, the miserable condition of this world. Living in the material world means solving problems, that's all. You're just solving, you get one problem, you solve it. Another one comes up, you solve it. Sometimes you get a bunch of them at once. <laughs> we're, all to, we're only solving problems, that's all we're doing. We need money, so we have to solve that problem. We need relationships, we have to solve that problem. We want things to go in a certain direction and it doesn't go, we have to solve that problem. So it's just problem solving. One thing after another, after another, after another. And so the message is that there is a place where all these things don't exist, where everything is perfect, where uh, activities are done in pure love, devotion, where there's a variety of different things and there is no inebriates, there's no temporarily, everything is eternal. The happiness is unlimitedly available. One is in full knowledge. Ignorance is a form of suffering and knowledge is a form of happiness. 
that's there in, in the soul and the soul's aware, awareness of that comes when, when we reveal our spiritual nature. So the message of this verse is just, you know, we should don't look for any, you can expect difficulties in this world. The solution is Krishna consciousness. We try to adjust the material energy to make it better. Sometimes it temporarily gets better, but that's all, just temporarily. And sometimes that temporarily is, you know, quick, or sometimes it's a little extended. But in any case, it's all temporary. Everything, you know, everything we work for, we're going to lose eventually. <laughs> Whatever we gain in this world, we have to give it all up. So, but anything you do in spiritual life compounds itself and is bringing us to a consciousness which will eventually come to our pure consciousness or Krishna consciousness. So uh, one who's intelligent, they can see, oh, this is the nature of this world. So why put any hope for happiness or even longevity in this world? I'm here, let me, let me understand how I can plant the seeds for future happiness. That is called Shreyas. There is Shreyas and Prayas. Prayas means immediate gratification and Shreyas means long-term benefit or future benefit. So we can plan for our future benefit by practicing those things which are done in a realized way when we actually come to the stage of perfection. So right now we're practicing to become who we want to be. And then we want to bring other people who are connected with us in some way into that same thing. The danger is that when we try to help people in the material world in a material way, we get dragged down into the material energy also. And then we lose our, our scope or our vision of who we are and what, what is our goal of life. So the idea is always try to pull people towards spiritual life. If we, ha if we can do it by making some material arrangement as a prelude to that, that's good, or that's beneficial, or that's, in other words, that's acceptable. But if it becomes the end in itself, then it's a waste of time. So whatever you're doing has to lead to Krishna consciousness. or lead others to Krishna consciousness. Whether it's family members, friends, society, nation, personal, whatever, has to somehow or other bring us closer to our eternal identity through activities, through knowledge, both. Yeah, it's, it's a very strong, but clear. This is Srimad Bhagavatam. Srimad Bhagavatam is clear. It gets right to the point. It doesn't try to patronize anyone's material sentiments by talking in a concessionary way. It tells you exactly who you are and where your success in life is and how to achieve it. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you. And as I said, you know, we've read it. I've read it many times, many times. So put it into practice when it's required, it requires devotees help and association. That's what I've realized in the last two weeks. That's the test. Yes. Our, our theory, our theory will be tested. And then we see what is our worth at that time. Getting help from devotees is part of the process. Because uh, they say when you're inside the forest, you can't see, when you're in, in the forest, you can't see all the trees. If you go above the forest, then you can see all the trees and you can see how expansive the forest is. But while you're in it, you only see a few trees in front of you. <laughs> That's all you can see. But there's much more than what you can see. So getting help from others is part of is why we are a society 
Otherwise, what's the use of having a society? Society means to work together in a unified way. Thank you, Marat. <laughs> I don't know if I made you feel any better, but <laughs> no, no, Marat. This this verse when I I joined about five ten minutes late, and I I looked at that verse, and I was like, this is so applicable to what I'm going through at the moment. But uh, and and all practically, I was. I'm still been, we are all been tested at every moment, sometimes more, sometimes less, but this, this was very relevant. So I thought I share it yeah. with you, Maharaj. Face the challenges with knowledge and with, and trying to access the mercy of the Lord. And then we're equipped to deal with challenges, obstacles, problems. Thank you. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Thank you. Please come every day. <laughs> yes, Maharaj, I will. I will. Last two weeks, I, I was off the track because a lot going on, but definitely I will. I'm back now. Thank you, Maharaj. All right. I will make sure you come back on the track. <laughs> <laughs> Hare Krishna. I will get out my tracking system. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. It's always a pleasure to have you with us. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. Hey, Mother Lavanya. Um, Guru Maharaj, uh, even I was uh, going through the same situation as Deeptesh Prabhu, like our family members got affected with coronavirus. And uh, even I was, uh, uh, last week all, um, I was also got very disturbed. But, um, but I realized one point that my sadhana is not that much strong. Uh, that's why um, I'm getting disturbed and uh, going off track. Uh, so as you said, like um, as Deeptesh Prabhu was also saying that, it's all testing times uh, for everyone uh, who has a family in India. Um, they are also in uh, this type of situation. And um, yeah, yes, Guru Maharaj, I realized that uh, my sadhana is not that much strong. So I have to make my sadhana strong so that I should not get disturbed um, um, by all these things and uh, focus on Krishna's lotus feet on your lotus feet, Guru Maharaj. Yeah, when you're not disturbed, you can see things more clearly. That's the point. You're, you're better equipped to see the situation and also to deal with it. Getting disturbed makes it hard because the disturbance is, uh, blocks the intelligence and we get more on the emotional level. Mm -hmm. Everything has to be dealt with with proper intelligence. Mm -hmm. And intelligence comes from Krishna, from the spiritual master, from the Shastras, from the Guru, from different sources, from the devotees, from our own previous experiences. We put it all together. Yeah, so we have to face life is, you know, life is what it is. It's a challenge. It's a challenge to become Krishna conscious and somehow adjust our material energy in such a way that we can somehow live here without too much disturbances. If we have too much disturbances in our life, then it makes Krishna consciousness uh, too much of a struggle. But the make sure that our, our material life doesn't become overwhelming and when it does, then we have to seek guidance and help and stay strong. Because there's a solution to every, as there is a problem, there's a solution. It's not like there's, a, there's no problem you can't solve. But we always, sometimes we don't know the solution or sometimes we do know the solution, but we can't apply it. 
Yeah, that's why it is with diptych is getting help from others is a very important part of it. And uh, staying clear in our practice of Krishna consciousness, not getting disturbed. Mm -hmm. Hare Krishna. This world is temporary and everything in it is temporary. We have to deal with the temporary and we have to live for the eternal because if we don't, we'll always be defeated and disappointed. On the spiritual life, there, there may be struggles, but there's no, there's no defeat. Because when you're, when you're trying to become Krishna conscious, that effort alone is advancement in devotional service. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Vivek. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to you Guru Maharaj. Welcome uh, back. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry Guru Maharaj, just like office life. But uh, I think this one thing, uh, Guru Maharaj, like this COVID situation is really not good. But one thing I will feel my personal realization that uh, uh, in family, yes, like uh, uh, my sisters and many other relatives got attack of this. And uh, like few of them, like uh, friends, fathers, and here and there, they left body also. Uh, not good situation, but one thing I found like good in that, um, that it was a really good platform for preaching. Like from last two weeks, somehow uh, that really helping. Uh, People normally are so much in panic right now that why this is happening, why this is happening to me, I have not done anything or like everybody feels that I have not done anything bad. So why like I have just, so I think this was a good time. Like I also try to learn a lot, hear lots of classes, how I can like give some positive messages, what I should do. And that really somehow Guru Maharaj by your blessings, it's really, really helping somehow like uh, even one friend's father who left so arranging like uh, a Zoom program, satsang for their family, everybody together, reading Bhagavad Gita and like why really like this is happening. So they were saying like, yes, we were in so much negative, but somehow with devotee presence because we arranged through all the devotee. So they all felt like very positive. So I feel like, yes, uh, Krishna is doing this all his plan. Uh, we have to take like this as his Leela because as you rightly mentioned in last few uh, uh, classes that mother earth how she is suffering through and this is all our karma and our reactions what's going on but this is really it's also it's also bad leadership the world doesn't have any good leadership there's no real kshatriyas everyone is led by sudras and at best vaishas vaishas and knows how to make money sudras all they know how to do is uh you know make trouble. <laughs> so, Prabhupada puts a lot of uh, blame on the leadership of the world. I think why people are suffering so much. We, we accept bad leaderships. People don't, those in power, they don't know how to lead. Even if they do and know how to lead, they can't do it because they're under so much pressure from everything around them. We don't have any Rejarsis. Rajarisis, saintly kings, kings, people who are advised by spiritual persons to, to manage the state. And that's how, that's how Vedic society was. You had your kings who were getting advice from the Brahmanas and the Brahmanas were simply there to guide the ruling class in many matters and how to rule the kingdom based on both material principles and spiritual you know, spiritual values. But now everything is about money. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Money is the only thing that drives everything. Power, position, money, like that. So we live in a very, uh, how do you say, time where this is Kali Yuga and the leadership is just bad. And you read, if the, you read in the 12th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, how society will continue to, to degrade itself even more and more. So people are good, but they're misled. There's so many people are misled nowadays. They don't know what to do or how to maybe become happy. They don't know where they're, where to find happiness. And they watch television, which is full of violence. They listen to various kinds of media, which is always trying to sell them something so they can get money. And this, this world has nothing to do with human life. It's all about, you know, it's all about some external gratification. Real human life means to awaken within the living entities, their relationship with the Supreme and work in that, in that capacity. And there can be happiness, material happiness also. One can have nice family, nice place to live, many nice amenities, so many things. The atmosphere is nice and people are not trying to exploit each other, but we live in a world of exploitation. It's all coming from the leaders and everybody else follows the leaders. They become just like the leaders. So Prabhupada put a lot of of blame on the leadership within the world today. They're just, he said, they're just thieves or dacoits, rogues, and uh, demons, that's all, <laughs> in the dress of government people, and then dress of people in positions of, of control within society. They don't know, how, they can't control anything. They don't have any values. They simply work for the aggrandizement of the body. So majority of the world is under, under the control of such leadership. And that's why there's so much suffering. That's the main, but people are becoming like the leaders. And so they're getting the same reactions anyway. But generally people are good in general. It's mostly the politicians and those who are in positions of leadership that are exploiting the whole world for their own selfish interests. And that's quite, that's everywhere, practically everywhere. Mm -hmm. There's no honest men anymore. There's no intelligent men anymore. You can see that as time goes on. Many years ago, I mean, many decades ago, or not decades, but maybe centuries ago, you would, there were so many people who were so intelligent, wise, creative. Even within the last couple hundred years, all that's gone. Who's a great man nowadays? <laughs> Somebody who's got money, that's all. He may be, he may be a woman hunger, a woman monger. He may be a drunkard. He may be, uh, you know, committing all kinds of sinful acts. But if he's got money, you know, he's he's in power. He's got influence. And this is what this is what we're being led by the world today. It doesn't matter. Money is the is the whole thing that drives everything in nowadays. It's all about economic gain, and economic gain means control. And control means exploitation, and exploitation means people are suffering. So you know, we're living at a very uh, difficult time because Kali Yuga is showing its face in very horrible ways. And it's only going to get worse um, unless the devotees of the Lord actually start to unite and become strong and then propagate religious principles. So at the same time, while all this is going on, there are people who are becoming Krishna conscious, who are becoming more uh, God conscious. And that's increasing in some areas of the world. 
So you have what is called, what's happening now is you have a dichotomy. You, there used to be a few saintly persons and a few evil demoniac persons. Now you have both of those categories increasing. There's more saintly persons and there is more evil persons. And the middle of the road, which is the majority of the people, is becoming less. And then the world is becoming polarized into these more or less these two areas now. But because the demons are in control, at least of the, 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 the handles of society, they are making all, they, they call the shots on how, what happens in the world. And people go along with it. So people are suffering. You can't be happy under a bad master. <laughs> it's not possible. <laughs> it's just not possible. So you're going to have all these calamities have, have them. You know, if you had good leadership, when this uh, virus came, it would have been over in a month, not even. But you don't have good. In fact, if you had good leadership, it would have never even came in the first place. <laughs> Because a pious king brings about auspiciousness, auspiciousness everywhere, a pious leader. But there's no piety in the leadership. It's all business-like uh, planning, that's all. And they're all, all the leaders are planning how the people should, uh, how the people should be acting and thinking and doing. And this is what this comes on as the propaganda that we get every day in the form of media. Just like the idea, should we have guns or no guns? Of course, you live in London, so there's no people are not allowed to have private guns. But in America, everybody has guns. So they've been fighting this for years, trying to make gun legislation to restrict people. But but every, practically every household has a gun, <laughs> rifles, sometimes automatic weapons, pistols and everything. So then what is it? Is it guns or no guns? Which one is gonna be the best? So but then you turn on the television or you turn on any media, what do you get? Violence. <laughs> Violence or some kind of sexual exploit. So this goes on as entertainment. So what do you expect from the population? <laughs> They're being brainwashed and being saturated with a type of a violent lifestyle. And then when it comes out in the real sense, people are complaining. Uh, you know, in America, you know, kids coming into the school with automatic rifles and shooting up their, their fellow students, <laughs> teachers, it was, it's happening all the time. People go on a rampage and just start killing people. And so it's an insane society like that. And so they blame it on the guns, but it's not the guns that do it. It's like, it's like uh, if somebody shoots somebody and kills them and the person's brought to court and says, well, it wasn't me who did it. It was my, it was the gun that did it. The gun should be punished. <laughs> That would be that would be ridiculous, right? So it's the same thing, you know. People are are exposed to all kinds of sinful and violent things throughout their whole life, and then when it happens in real life, it comes in the form of media or entertainment or whatever else it comes in the form of. And so you expect people to be peaceful and happy and, you know, loving. Why don't you have programs about self-realization, about how to live in the family according to religious principles? None of these things, and there's no education anywhere coming through the media. If it's done, it's done in the private sector by somebody who wants to do something. But the mass media is not interested in these things because it doesn't make any money. So Prabhupada, again, I mentioned again, he put that people are suffering because of the leaders in the world. He, he says it over and over again. People are generally good, 
but they're being misled, exploited, and uh, you know, miseducated, and taught the wrong things from the time they're born throughout their whole life. That's why those who grew up in the Vedic society, they know what's right. But when they find themselves in another society, which is different from what they grew up in, they uh, find themselves confused on how to live, you know? Because everything they, they live for is being pushed aside and everything that they were taught was wrong was being, was being uh, publicized as a way to live. You know, in fact, legally, all of the leaders in government, they always have some sexual exploits with some kind of women. They take advantage of their association with various types of ladies, and they have so many affairs. Sometimes they are, they're exposed, but most of the time it's not even exposed. They take big salaries. They fight amongst each other. <laughs> And who suffers? The people. <laughs> so you you know this is this is today's world. It's just bad leadership. And that's why Prabhupada wanted us to create the, the separate society within the society and show people ideally how to live. And he, he saw that as the way for the future. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, if you're a good person, you're just miserable in the midst of all this other stuff because you don't want it, but it's being thrown at you anyway. And if you're not so good, then you're influenced by it and you start thinking, start taking it up and become like that. Mm -hmm. So there is, there is proper material life. Yeah, there is one chapter in the Bhagavatam, I think, talks about ideal material life or ideal family life. It's in the seventh canto. It talks about an ideal society on the material level, but it always includes the spiritual principles as motivating forces for the material activities. But people don't want that or they're not taught to want that, and they're taught something else. So this is what we have to face and try as the Krishna conscious devotees, we need to be try to bring ourselves together with each other and work together to propagate spiritual principles by our example and by our words, both. And as I mentioned, the dichotomy in the world is, is, is becoming more and more uh, clear. There are more evil people and there are more good people. Those in the middle of the road who are somewhere in between, they're becoming less. They're either moving one way or the other by the influence of either one of these types of societies. So that's the fact that there are more good people coming up is because of Krishna consciousness. If a person is Krishna conscious, they have good qualities automatically. And this is also seen Guru Maharaj, like uh, uh, I think Shidavi Mataji sent that information and I also got that from one devotee that uh, like uh, US, Brazil and India are the largest beef exporter uh, in last year. Mm -hmm. uh, and somehow like it's relating like most number of COVID cases as of today, it might be a coincidence, but it's a true fact uh, that in these three countries are the largest COVID cases. So yeah, somehow... Yeah, U.S., Brazil, and, and India. Uh, 
and India, yeah. China also. It's not mentioned as the largest three, top three uh, Guru Maharaj. So, yeah. but it's mentioned as the, t the the top five. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Five is yeah. This and Krishna Shaitra Maharaj's book mentions five. And uh, China is another one, and I can't remember the fourth, the fifth country. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. Australia, Guru Maharaj. Australia, right, that's right, Australia. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah and, you know, and th this is the, one of the most heinous type of sinful activities to kill other living entities simply for, uh, you know, for uh, economic gain or for sense gratification. And now they're gonna kill human be beings for the same thing. <laughs> they, once you kill animals wholesalely, then you start moving and killing human beings. And then it becomes no different. The, the killing process goes on. <laughs> You know, we have to see what this world, what the world, it's not so much the world, it's people are not educated in the real values of life. They're educated how to become, uh, you know, economic uh, entrepreneurs, making money and enjoying the senses. That's all. Therefore, we have something to offer people. We have also a lifestyle, which is free from all this. But if we don't get it together as a society, you know, and then Lord Chaitanya will have to postpone his program to the next generation when the next generation may be more uh, inclined to do it. Because Prabhupada said, if this generation doesn't become doesn't make the world Krishna conscious, then the next generation will. And if that doesn't, it'll be the next generation. So Krishna Lord will empower you know, whoever's ready to make that sacrifice to bring Krishna consciousness to the world. We say Krishna consciousness, but we, we can also use the broader term God consciousness, which includes other forms of spirituality which centers around the worship of God. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to you, Guru Maharaj. Guru Maharaj, do you think people are ready to hear about Krishna consciousness, what it entails, what it involves, what are the four principles, and how to make our lives successful? I think they're very, I think they're ready, very ready, but the question is, we're not out there enough. And we have to make vigorous propaganda in order to, you know, to attract people. Yeah, there's a lot of people out there that if we're out there, they'll be they'll take it. But if we're not out there, then we we don't have a chance. We have to find ways to reach the people in different. Ways. Yeah. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Dear devotees, if you have further questions about how to reach people with this urgent message of Krishna consciousness, please ask Guru Maharaj. Or any question. <laughs> Thank you.
It doesn't look like there are any more questions for today, Guru Maharaj. Okay, thank you very much. We'll end here, come back tomorrow. On Tuesday, we'll speak about the Dadhar Pandit. And after Tuesday, we'll try to move in more into a more serialized series of topics. Um, and we'll be leading up to the appearance of Lord Nishringadev, which is on the 25th of this month. So maybe from the uh, 18th or 17th, actually, 17th to the 25th, we'll speak on Lord Nishringadev. Before then, we'll do other uh, topics related to different points of interest. But Gadadhar Pandit on Tuesday, which is the 11th. Mm -hmm. Thank okay, you, thank you. Hi, Krishna Shri Guru Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Sri Prabhupada. I wanted to read my comment if you can allow me. What comment is that? Uh, I just wrote it in the group. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Then read your comment. Thank you. I wanted to wish you happy Mother's Day. I wish baby Krishna and Yashoda Maya first today and Srimati Radharani Ji. I also wanted to wish all the mothers of the Guru Parampara and all the motherly souls. And thank you especially for blessing me through your association for Sri Devi Mataji and Lavanya Mataji's association and all other Mataji's in this group. Thank you so much. I wish you all a happy Mother's Day for all mothers and sisters, daughters, and uh, everyone else. Thank you. Hare Krishna. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, Mother's Day is, everyone remembers Mother's Day. Okay, because everybody has a mother. Okay, thank you. Srila Prabhupada. Jai. Jai. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you, devotees and 